Packet Fabric is a team, a team that delivers a global, high-scale private network as a service platform for all your cloud and enterprise networking needs. It's our private network, not the internet, controlled by you via our software. And just like everything else we build, we stand behind it and guarantee it. Today, the whole team is very excited to bring you something we think is truly game-changing, the Packet Fabric Cloud Router. Packet Fabric's Cloud Router enables high-speed private connectivity between clouds without you even having to connect to our network. It's all self-contained in our platform. The Packet Fabric Cloud Router can reduce your cloud networking costs so dramatically, we're finding that customers can increase their bandwidth to the cloud without even opening their wallet. So let's start with the architecture that allows us to do this. Did you know that underneath the cloud icons, there are specific places where cloud service providers give partners like Packet Fabric exclusive access to their backbone? It's at these connectivity points, called on-ramps, that Packet Fabric's platform connects directly into the cloud service provider's own private backbone. Now you benefit from a drastically reduced rate for your data transfers, a simple, low, flat rate. Doing this over the internet? Well, why would you needlessly engage hard mode on your network? If you're successful, you get charged an arm and a leg for data leaving the cloud over the internet. The more successful you are, the more arms and legs. I mean, hard mode, or using inefficient networks like the internet, yields inefficient application results. You have no control over latency, jitter, end-to-end -end bandwidth, let alone the attack surface it provides. The solution typically is to then throw more expensive cloud resources at the problem instead of dealing with the network. It's hardly an approach based on fundamentals. You see, fundamental engineering practices mean a distributed problem requires a distributed solution, and the team delivered that in the multi-cloud router. You got mind-blowing performance. No routers on a stick here. And we've got terabits of scale with latency so low, you'll be amazed, and it's all on tap by the cloud router. No matter how much data you have to move, you'll only ever pay the same low flat rate on your service provider bill for egress data. We make it that easy. With our cloud router, you'll see information about your multi-cloud environment you've never had a chance to see before, all in one place. All the routing information, logs, traffic statistics you could ever need from both the portal and API. Oh, and thanks to the intuitive and snappy front end, it's dead set simple to set up too. Let me show you how our team built something for your team that's fundamentally faster, cheaper, and all around just better than any other way of doing multi-cloud. There's also extensive and easy to read documentation available at docs.packetfabric.com. Read the docs. Thank me later. Everything you need to know about the Packet Fabric Cloud Router service, including how to create an inter-cloud connection with Packet Fabric, is described in our documentation. From prereqs to field descriptions and detailed how-to guides, you'll find us an invaluable reference for all your services. The topology we're going to build involves four CSPs, each with their own internal subnet that will be routed. And we're also going to show you just how easy it is to see everything all in one place, as well as do a little bit of troubleshooting. Log into the Packet Fabric portal, select Create Cloud Router, give it a name, an autonomous system number, choose your billing department if you need to, and place your order. It's that simple. Looking at our topology, it's time to add a connection. We're going to add AWS. Focusing again on our documentation, you'll find we not only have the steps related to the packet fabric side, but also the steps you need to take on the CSP side, which I know you'll find extremely valuable. From the Cloud Router Overflow menu, select Add Connection. Select AWS, then choose your on-ramp. Recall that on-ramps, located globally, are where the cloud service providers give Packet Fabric exclusive access to their backbone. Here you can see Frankfurt, Amsterdam, as well as where we will ultimately choose Santa Clara. Choose your speed. We support up to 10 gigabits at line rate. We support availability zones that give you redundancy for every single component that delivers the service. We support public peering, but we won't be using that today. Enter your AWS account ID, they'll be using the connection so this is how we can direct a connection to that account on your behalf and a description for that connection. And it's that simple. A short time later and you're provisioned.
We do need to accept the connection in AWS. So logging into the console, select your connection and accept it. We then need, once it's available, to create a transit VIF. Enter all the information required here for each field and note in particular the ASN. Now you've created your transit VIF, you'll be able to access the BGP information, which is highlighted here. Note also the ASN will need those on the packet fabric side. Copying the highlighted information from AWS, we can then select allow longer prefixes. This is just going to simplify our route filters, and we're going to say that anything to or from the cloud starting with 10 will be allowed. Submit that, and it's that simple. Our BGP session is going to be configured, then going to fetching potentially, but ultimately will end in established, which means that we have routes. Referring back to our topology, AWS now looks like this, and we should see a 1088 route. But next, let's go focus on Google. For Google, we're going to create a partner VLAN attachment using the following information, and then we'll need to get the pairing key and the VLAN attachment name, which are highlighted here. In the Packet Fabric portal, in the Overflow menu, add Connection, Google, then choose your on-ramp, your capacity, then enter the pairing key and the VLAN attachment name from the Google portal. Give it a description and there you go. Short time later will be provisioned. Returning to the Google portal, we need to configure BGP, update the ASN number, as well as tell it to use the default, which is the Cloud Router's advertisements, and continue. We can then go back to the Cloud Router, enter the highlighted information from the Google portal, enter our route filters, That's it. Pretty soon, we'll be established. Now we set up Google, let's set up Azure. First, we need to create an express route. From here, enter all the information that is shown on the screen, especially the highlighted fields. Once created, we can then get the service key. This is going to be needed in the Packet Fabric portal. To the Overflow menu, add Connection, select Azure, and to the similar process, choose your on-ramp, your capacity, enter the service key, and give the connection a description. And it's that simple. Now I'm going to show you a different way to access some of the details. We'll look at the Cloud Router details. We'll see each of the connections down below. For Azure, we'll view details. Now we'll need the VLAN ID from the BGP settings shown here, highlighted. Enter our ASN, choose two subnets and a VLAN ID from our portal. Back to the portal, We'll use the IP addresses that we got entered into Azure for the connection and then enter our route filters, allowing anything starting with 10 both into and out of the cloud router. And it's, again, that simple. Eventually we'll move from configuring to established and we're in business. We do need to add a connection though between the express route and our VPC gateway. So going to express route, choose connections, Fill in the connection information, choosing our gateway that we set up previously. And after validation, create, and we should be good to go. Referring to our topology, Azure's done. 
Now it's time to go and have a look at IBM. And you'll note the subnet here is in red. We'll get to that. From the Cloud Router Overflow menu, add connection, choose IBM, select your on-ramp, your speed, availability zone, and account ID. Now we need to blur this, but it's simply a UUID, but it's something you really shouldn't share. And again, it's that simple. Now with IBM connections, we do need to go to their portal to accept it before we can proceed. Go to interconnectivity, direct link, search for your cloud router by name, Scroll down to review, review the information and accept. Choose your resource group, fill in the various options that work for you, agree and create. Now the connection will proceed. When we configure BGP, you'll note some of the information has already been filled in by the IBM Packet Fabric API. Adding our route filters. And it's that simple again. We'll move from configuring to fetching. Finally established. Now we configured IBM, we're done with our topology. But first, we probably might want to have a look at some troubleshooting tools. Let's look at our routing table for IBM by selecting Details, then Routes. We've received no routes. Very strange. But we're advertising routes per our topology. Hmm. Now, maybe they're hidden. Ah, we can see that 169.254 is hidden. Why? Because it didn't start with 10, like all our route filters. So thank you very much for your time. And hopefully the cloud router is going to save you a lot of time and money, as well as make your multi-cloud experience so much better. So what are you waiting for? Why don't you join us on the fabric, the new cloud router enabled fabric and visit our website and schedule a demo.